Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis if you're new a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and please like subscribe and share um, with your fellow colleagues this video um, and many of my other videos on my youtube channel if you find the content that i provide useful every week it doesn't cost you anything to like and it really does uh, help and support the channel and, and get this information quality information to uh, traders that really need it and uh Unlike um, many, the majority of other, um, I guess, uh, YouTube um, analysts, we at Trading 180 use the fundamental and technical analysis approach, not just technical analysis, and we use fundamental analysis to really establish value. Um, it amazes me how uh, people tend to trade without understanding a fundamental analysis. If you call yourself a Forex trader but don't know what the fundamentals and the really the drivers behind price are, then you're really just a technical trader that trades Forex, really. Um, and you can apply those same uh, technical strategies to pretty much any market, but you really need to know fundamental analysis on what moves that asset class that you are um, that you are trading and what gives it its value so then we can establish whether something is an asset class is undervalued a fair value or even expensive and staying out of a um, of a trade anyways uh, um, getting into the uh, week ahead before we get into the fundamentals and technicals and in the week ahead we have um, we have flash PMI surveys for the US, UK, Eurozone, Japan, and Australia, and it will give an insight about the state of the global economic recovery. Uh, while central banks in uh, China, Philippines, Swiss, um, Thailand, Switzerland, which is one that we uh, that we trade, the Swiss franc, um, will be deciding on monetary policy. So um, probably not any any surprises there to be fair uh, when it comes to central bank policy when it comes to pmis i guess it just adds to the uh, the growth um sentiment um if there are any pmi surveys that are probably below um you know forecast i don't think it would matter too much unless it's way below forecast but generally you know we should see some positivity um and, and positive numbers other important releases to follow include the u.s final four quarter gdp which although um i you know watch and i have a, a i guess a, a big um i think gdp is a, a quite an important thing to watch and one of the main macroeconomic markers that i do watch um the final fourth quarter has really already been priced in so um, you really want to when you're if you're trading GDP news announcements, it's really the advanced, the first one to come out. This is like the last one to come out because there's an advanced, there's the second estimate, and then there's the final, and um, uh, the uh, the fourth quarter final pretty much um, has been priced in already. So unless there is a major surprise, which I highly doubt, um, uh, that won't be. A, really a, a big uh, news event or market mover. So durable goods orders and personal income and outlays. UK unemployment, I think that'll be uh, uh, definitely one to watch. Retail trade and inflation data. Inflation data is definitely something, um, is, is a theme and we'll get into that when we uh, look at some of the um, currency pairs. Uh, and Eurozone and South Korea consumer morale. So let's get into the, uh, the fundamentals and the technicals and starting off as we always do on the Dow, um, sorry, the US dollar index. So the DXY and uh, just a measure, this, the DXY is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro, the yen, the pound, and, uh, and a few others. And uh, uh, what we've seen last week really is uh, last week or two is really for the dollar price kind of move, you know, a bit sideways, but I um, anticipate prices to go, you know, higher in the, uh, in the short term. Uh, for, for, for for these reasons and uh, if we look at um, the Financial Times taper tantrum and inflation replaced COVID as top investor worries so fund managers have grown increasingly worried uh, a sharp rise in rates could knock markets and I've been really you know saying this for um, for a while now you know my um, 
my, my bias was uh, um, uh, long dollar. And we'll just have a quick read of uh, some of these uh, paragraphs. The coronavirus has been overtaken for the first time since the early days of the pandemic more than a year ago as the top risk uh, that keeps investors up at night, according to a new poll of fund managers. So money managers polled by Bank of America Nasi inflation as an unruly rise in borrowing costs uh, like that seen during the uh, 2013 taper tantrum as the key tail risk that could unsettle global markets. So, so the survey investors with $597 billion in assets under management highlights the investors' concerns uh, that the economic recovery from COVID backed by unprecedented stimulus may unleash a surge of price growth that could be difficult to tame. So with all of that, <coughs> inflation really has come into the, uh, the, the the limelight, it was all about the economic recovery and GDP, and it still is about the economic recovery, recovery but now with all the stimulus and an unprecedented stimulus that's been uh, going on over the past uh, year or two, actually a bit longer than that, but there's definitely been a lot of unprecedented stimulus since the uh, COVID um, uh, hit us last year, March, uh, February, March. Um, inflation, you know, is 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 a, is a definite concern. And just quickly, uh, so rising inflation expectation and bets that central banks, particularly the U.S. Federal Reserve, may have to tighten policy sooner than have um, than planned, have triggered a widespread sell-off in government bond markets, which investors worry could get worse. So there's two things going on here. So um, a rise, a tightening policy, which is basically a hike in interest rates, and that is generally positive as long as you have GDP alongside, um, you know, the the, uh, the 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 rate hike, and also as well, uh, the Fed won't um, uh, hike rates unless they get an average inflation of um, above 2%. So they don't want to hike too soon because that could choke off the um, the economy. So this is still data dependent. We still have to wait for the data to come out. The data has to support the narrative. If the data doesn't support the narrative, then basically um, it's, it's just this, uh, this, this trade idea as far as buying the dollar um, will, will, will kind of fizzle out. But... <clears throat> You know, investors um, are looking at potentially within the next, I think, two years, a rate hike. And also uh, it's been triggered by a sell off in government bonds, which is basically uh, yields are rising as bond prices as they work inversely. Bond prices work inversely to bond yields and yields have been going up on like the 10 year and, and 30 year, etc. So we, we no longer have an inverted uh, yield curve in the um, uh, for bonds. But um with that being said, that really is um, the the uh, the focus. So with the dollar, for me, as long as um, dollar data um, still comes out, so inflation, interest rates, um, or I say interest rates, but inflation and the uh, GDP come out as positive, then my bias is to the long side. And what I'm looking for in a dollar index is just really some confluence so if you see prices go to the downside a little bit but then we get a nice uh, um, some confluence of buying then we go over to the um, dollar crosses and look for buying of the dollar on that currency pair and if you do want to be a seller right into you know um, some news because again none of us know whether the news is going to come out positive or negative um, if it comes out negative then it could be a really nice um area to short if prices do come up to this uh, supply zone um, from back in uh, November 2020. But the path of least resistance at the moment is to the upside. You also want to watch bond yields as they as they keep going higher. And that would also support uh, dollar buyers. And I've really been a buyer of the dollar from back in um, January, matter of fact. Um, been looking to buy the dollar and um, uh, I advise the guys in my uh, Discord room uh, that we should be buying a dollar from January, I think, 27th, 28th. And you can see pretty much what's been happening. Anyways, um, so those are really the two areas at the moment. Nothing in between. Prices are really kind of going sideways. Um, looking at the dollar yen, dollar yen, look at this, just uh, making higher highs. So we've actually made technically a new high <clears throat> right here. And. Um, so that's a little bit of a demand zone there. So if price does come down, 
into that zone, there will be a buying opportunity. Now, is that the best buying opportunity considering that we've had you know, some demand here and maybe some demand here? For me, I think this is a bit too hard. I really want a, either a deeper pullback to come down into this uh, uh, 106.76 uh, area, or um, I'd want prices to really kind of prove that there's demand here then a pull back into that 108.48 level before looking at getting long. If risk off does come into the market because the Japanese yen is a safe haven asset, um, and if risk off does come in, for example, there could be fears about again, you know, coronavirus, a new strain, etc., um, or even some basically some some bad do uh, U.S. dollar news. Then this could be actually a really decent sell to the downside. So um, let's see what happens there. A decent area, or actually quite a nice uh, supply zone from a technical analysis perspective. But you have to understand that it's the fundamentals and value, right, that drive prices. Just because you see a level um, of supply doesn't mean you should get short. If you're doing that, you're really just um, uh, you, you, you're just basically just trading, you know, chances, or you're not you're not trading um, the best probabilities. It's, it's best to have um, the fundamental edge as well within your trading. Um, and then you know you can really be selective with the trades that you do take and take really higher quality trades with the, 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 the banks behind you with the financial institutions behind you because they don't trade only um, fundamentals they I mean sorry technicals they look at the fundamentals and risk sentiments so um, again path of least resistance probably to the upside for the for the foreseeable future looking at the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss I'm really trying to get long on this. Um, many of the guys in the room know that I'm also uh, want to get long around this 92 area. This is actually uh, a bit of a what we would term a or I term a CPR zone, a capture pain relief zone at this 92 area. But from a daily demand zone, we're looking at 91, 0.914 uh, or five area before prices. You know, look for any kind of long trades, but I'll be looking at here first as a as an area to look for any kind of long trades. We can delete this area of supply, and uh, I will start drawing some supply here because there is uh, supply. Not uh, she's decent area of supply, I guess. But um, again, the profitless resistance, you'd have to really say, why is the Swiss franc a bargain up here? And um, I can't see the Swiss franc being a bargain. If we do get a pullback for me, um, that's where I'm looking for a buying opportunity. And of course, this isn't financial advice. What I'm doing is telling you what um, I am doing um, with, with, with my own trading. So um, for me, uh, long dollar, but if you do want to get sh uh, long on the uh, Swiss franc or short on this currency pair, again, due to some sort of risk off sentiments and fear, uncertainty and doubt that comes into the market, then this actually would be a very nice uh, short trading opportunity. Um, dollar CAD, so dollar CAD, I was saying last week that the CAD, in fact, is quite strong. Uh, as a commodity currency and uh, even though we came back down into this zone I would not be taking that long and uh, we can pretty much see how that worked out again if you don't understand the fundamentals and you're just take, taking technical patterns because you think that's, a, that's an area to buy you're literally going to be on the wrong side more often than not so um, this gets deleted you really want price to prove that there's some sort of demand around here so I'd want to see some higher highs, higher lows being made, and then I'd look for price to come back down here. And also, not even just price to come back down, you, I'd have to really see a change in sentiment for the Canadian dollar for me to even think about getting um, long. But if you have two you know, strong currencies, for example, the uh, commodity currency with the CAD and the dollar, which has some good sentiment as well as good economic data, then that's the kind of trade where you just want to stay out of. What you want to trade is really look for divergences where you have a strong versus a weak currency, um, an appreciating currency versus a depreciating currency. This is what's known as divergence. And that is actually what causes trends. Yeah, Trends go higher or trends go lower depending on if you're buying the base or the quote currency and uh, you want to choose the best trades. The easier trade out there is to always, you know, bet on the strongest versus the weakest, right? If you're, you know, placing a bet on any kind of sports team, you would want to place the uh, the bet where you're getting obviously good, good odds, but um, the easier bet is 
um, you know, the, the best team versus the worst team or the best fighter versus the worst fighter or the best player versus the worst player, right? Even though you get worst odds, you know, you get terrible odds for those because the bookies actually know. But um, in, 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 uh, in Forex trading, uh, we can get really good odds and risk rewards as well as pick the best uh, pairs. And that's what it's really about. Anyways, um, looking for any kind of sell trades, I would probably look for um, that area this supply zone starting at one two six <clears throat> one two one point two six five seven area for any kind of short trades if you want to get short but personally um this isn't really a pair i'm really interested in moving on to the new zealand dollar and this is a pair that i am now interested in got in a trade uh up at the top around here we was going over this in the uh, group call that we had um on uh yesterday matter of fact saturday i'm recording this on sunday um, with the guys in the room and it is really because on the I think it was the what the Thursday um, New Zealand right when uh, were is at risk of a double dip recession as COVID-19 recovery stalls so um, the news came out on the Wednesday night or well, London time anyway and um, uh, by the time we got the data and by the time I woke up in the morning, I'd seen this and then literally entered into a nice trade right at the highs and got short on this supply zone price, entered into the supply zone and then a, a really, really nice short trade. So um, made a two to one on one position and now just uh, trying to swing trade the second position. And um, yeah, so... Uh, hopefully i think prices should want to you know roll over a little bit more we've definitely got some short-term um negative bias on the uh, new zealand dollar even though it is a commodity currency but um i think uh, with a double dip recession um uh, in <coughs> in the uh, uh in the consciousness of, of people in the negative data I think we should probably see a sell-off and I think actually we might want to see a, a deeper sell-off in, uh, down into the 70 cent. There was a bank, I saw an article, a bank that was predicting maybe 70 cent might be actually a decent area to look for some buys but uh, it really depends. But I think with the strong sentiment around the US dollar and now negative sentiment around the, uh, the, the New Zealand dollar, I think the 70 cent mark is a really good uh, opportunity or a profit target <clears throat> for, for me anyway. And anyone else if you are in that trade um again any kind of uh, long trades you probably i would say would want to wait for maybe a fresher area of demand this level has been touched once twice three times already so i'd probably say this 71 areas if it does come down here it's probably going to break and then maybe if you do want to get long on the new zealand dollar based off of maybe some change in sentiment or uh, fundamental data then uh, look for any kind of long trades there uh looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar again the pound has been actually quite um strong in a sense that we've had um the bank of england upgrades outlook for uk economies the central bank keeps interest rates at 0.1 and sees no medium term inflation risk so um there's some positive news not necessarily the most positive news in the world but um uh, risks of a recession are fading and um so the pound for me is not necessarily a, a great buy but it's um it's looking like a decent buy but i wouldn't buy it really personally against the um or i'm not buying it i should say against the uh, the us dollar there are better pairs out there to trade the british pound against so um for example the uh, pound yen uh, pound swiss which has been on an absolute tear um recently I'm, i've been waiting for a pullback for ages on that currency pair it just hasn't pulled back on those currency pairs i should say but we're on the pound dollar so um right now not really interested in it fundamentally but if you are and you want to take these trades i would probably say the best area to look for um any kind of buy trades is maybe the lower side of that demand zone or even even better you have uh that um uh demand zone down into the 1.366 that's a decent area of pullback you've got some decent support and resistance as confluence as well within that zone so a decent pullback <clears throat> within there 
if you are looking to get short on this currency pair, then I would say the uh, that supply zone right at the top around that one for one area is something that I would definitely be interested in if, if it came to a short, because I do think that the prices should want to uh, to start to range from now. They've been ranging over the past uh, few weeks anyway. Um, but I think the bigger range is definitely at the highs. The question is, is why would the pound go higher than the 142 or the, these highs here? Um, this is obviously seen as a, either an expensive area for the um, for the pound or a bargain for the US dollar. So I think this is probably now looking like a bargain for the US dollar. So if prices do drift up here at some point in the future, I think that actually might be a decent sell if I'm looking to if I was looking to trade this pair. Uh, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar. Um, really interesting um over you know the the week and um uh the the i think a lot of traders got caught going long on this currency pair um not necessarily a a, a supply zone from a supply zone perspective but um i was in a live call with some traders on the uh on the wednesday um evening uh, we have our uh, our calls on the Wednesday um, and uh, this had happened and one of the comment um, uh, traders in the group commented basically don't FOMO in on that and uh, a lot of traders would have definitely FOMO'd into that because that does really kind of draw traders attention a uh, nice uh, you know long candle um, and traders will tend to feel that they're missing out on that and uh, we ended up um, actually in real time as this was going on we were reading uh, this article here so Powell holds dovish line as Fed signals zero rates through 2023. And uh, as we were, as I was reading this and we were going through this to the group, um, we were uh, uh, basically uh, we derived from this article that um, that that it really wasn't as dovish as um, uh, the uh, the price action had suggested. So I'll give you an example, right? So an example of that was seven of 18 officials predicted higher rates by the end of 2023 compared with five um, of 17 at December's gathering. So in fact, there's more um, um, uh, officials that are predicting higher rates, which is basically, you know, a stronger dollar, right? It gives value to the dollar than there were in December, three months ago. So that actually is quite positive for the uh, the dollar. Also as well, there was um, the uh, the upgrade. So the Federal um, Reserve Chair Powell and his colleagues continued to project near zero rates, at least through 2023, despite upgrading their US economic outlook and mounting inflation worries in financial markets. Again, they're upgrading their economic outlook. That is positive. So I'm not going to go through this um, this whole article, but um, we were reading this literally at the time <clears throat> of the FOMC on Bloomberg. And uh, I said that at the time there's going to be traders that are going to be caught um, going long. Um, I was still had a short bias. I mean, I'm still in a trade um, short. Didn't get out of that trade. I was. We were waiting for basically a stop hunt above this level right here that would have been really nice if we could see we saw some sort of stop hunt unfortunately the the, the, the trade didn't happen um didn't appear you know but we got the direction right which is always really the key yeah is if we can get the, the get the direction right then secondary is okay how do we capitalize on that and we can't always capitalize on every single move but you know what we can do is if we stay in line with the fundamentals eventually we will be able to get some entries and uh get the uh the direction right and anyone who went long in this in this um in this uh candle here in real time uh is now you know stopped out or they're in a bit of trouble because they're moving and removing their stop losses so yeah uh i do think that prices will continue to uh, go lower as I've been saying for a while but also as well just to back that up mind the gap uh, mind the economic gap Europe and the US are drifting further apart so speedy of sorry speed of vaccination and size of rescue packages help explain the widening path to recovery and everything I was I've been saying about divergence right fundamental analysis is about finding value yeah and finding value from one currency and another currency 
looking at the economic data, looking at monetary policy, yeah, and um, and seeing the divergences. And what we can see is that the U.S. is pulling away with extra stimulus, right? So we've got the um, the U.S. from a GDP perspective, and we've got Europe and Japan lagging behind. <clears throat> And we've got fiscal support varies between countries, yeah. And uh, US closes the output gap swiftly, and then Europe struggles to rebound fully. And again, I've been saying this. If you've been following me for any length of time, check out last week and the week before, and the week before that. If you, you know, want to check out those videos. But um, I've been saying this for a while, and we switched our direction back in January where we were looking for short trades, and uh, it looks like the trade idea is playing out. It's just. Um, you know, uh, uh, it was unfortunate that we didn't get a bit of a stop hunt above these areas here before looking at getting, or a dip, I mean, for me anyway, an additional short uh, trade to the downside as I'm already in a trade from <clears throat> from up here and actually up here as well. So just swing trading the um, two positions and uh, and was waiting to enter into a third. <clears throat> Anyways, um, if we do get any kind of pullbacks on the daily, yeah, any pullbacks, um, then it would be for long trades or sorry short trades is my bias so anything around here would be nice don't know where we would get that though but we could get prices prove that there is a it, you know this area here is a bargain and if it does then you're looking for pullbacks into a demand zone which would probably be somewhere around this area here and then uh, look for any kind of short trade so proof of value first then pullbacks into the zone uh, moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen Again, even though as weak as the euro has been, doesn't mean that there aren't weaker currencies out there. And um, you can see the Japanese yen in a risk on environment is probably one of the worst um, currencies to buy. And uh, um, pretty much even though the euro again is weak, the, the, the yen is, is the weaker out of the two. So again, if you do want to be trading this pair, which I'm not really too interested in to be fair, but um, if you are, then that's a decent zone to get long on, especially if you see, I think it's down at the lows of that area there. Nice a bit of horizontal support um, uh, and resistance in that uh, uh, one two eight thirty to one two eight maybe forties fifties. Um, if you are looking for short trades, I'd gonna really wait for proof of value before um, you know getting short. So basically, waiting for prices to kind of sell off, prove that there's some sort of supply at these highs and then look for a pullback into that zone before looking to get short. Also as well, look for probably sentiment to you know change a little bit as well, maybe some sort of risk off sentiment or even just some bad news around you know Euros recovery, uh, vaccine rollout, et cetera, or in any kind of economic, um, macroeconomic data points uh, that, that come out uh, disappointing. Moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar, and again, um, two strong currencies or appreciating currencies, Australian dollar, is uh, doing really well. Um, they had uh, some really good unemployment uh, numbers, and um, and uh, again, the uh, U.S. dollar is uh, is is on the up and up as well. So you should really expect what a ranging market, right? You should expect prices to kind of go sideways to a certain extent. Um, I think my bias though would be to the upside in the in the probably the medium to long term. Um, although this isn't really a favorite of mine. Again, when you're trading, looking at two strong currencies or two weak currencies, um, those aren't you know the best trades. There are much more easier pairs to look to trade. So um, if I am looking for any kind of long trades, it would definitely be down by probably the 75, 50, 75 area. If I was looking for any kind of short trades, it would have to be at the really the highs before looking at getting uh, short on this uh, currency pairs but uh, overall I'm not really too keen on looking at that don't think there's really much opportunities from a fundamental perspective um, Aussie yen <clears throat> and Aussie yen again I've, as I've been saying and I keep repeating the Japanese yen is not really the one to buy in a risk on environment and you're seeing that happen look at that you're just seeing you know this massive uptrend so um, yeah, it's been, again, a bit difficult looking for trying to get in on an entry um, uh, on the uh, Aussie Aussie yen um, uh, over the past uh, month or two. There's been a bit of frustration, but again, prices will always come back and uh, hopefully we can capitalize on this. I think I'm going to move this uh, up to 
here. Again, this isn't the strongest area of supply, but well, I'd really want to see prices kind of come down into this demand zone before looking at getting short. If I was to get any, if I was to get short, or again, getting short around here would pretty much just mean <clears throat> that there's some sort of risk off sentiment. Yeah, so looking for risk off before looking at getting short. But as long as you know the global economic recovery uh, still stands, um, it's still that's the narrative then um, for me, it's the path of these resistance is to the upside, has to be. So any kind of pullbacks into those demand zones are gonna be um, the trade. And finally, we're looking at um, gold and gold. Uh, we've had a bit of pullback on gold. For me, um, just my bias overall, gold is, is, is a buyer, but um, from a fundamental perspective, um, with the, there's a lot going against gold. There's there's bonds going against um, uh, against gold because yields are going higher, right? So the yield curve, yield percentage, I guess, is going higher. So bonds, government bonds, uh, are also a risk um, off asset. But if you're getting yield on bonds or safe haven asset, I should say, if you're getting yields on bonds rather than gold money's going to flow out of gold and really kind of the logical play is kind of into bonds because you're getting a yield for holding government debt rather than no yield for holding gold um the thing that is going for gold i think is inflation worries right so gold is a hedge against inflation but i think until until we do see inflation start to get out of hand yeah then um I personally am not really a buyer of, of gold at the moment, especially with the with the dollar, you know, potentially strengthening, going, you know, from uh, uh, strength to strength. Especially, you know, the economic recovery. Um, uh, I can't I can't really see myself buying gold in in the near term. But again, if that that would change, if um, inflation really starts to become um, a, a problem, and uh, again. There's always an opportunity to buy gold, so I don't really look look at this as as far as missing out on the absolute lows. But if you do want to get long on this currency um, or this uh, gold, then I would probably delete that. Just draw a few demand zones, probably one there. Yeah, I'll probably say that one there as well. So um, any kind of pullbacks, I think, is decent for a long trade. But um, I really want to see. Um, uh, uh, some some sort of sentiment change against the US dollar. So again, so if there's if there's some really disappointing news on the dollar, so anything regarding you know any kind of economic recovery or even um, inflation not necessarily getting out of hand, it's counterintuitive. I know I said definitely buy gold, say definitely buy, um, but you know you might want to get into gold if inflation is you know getting out of hand. But I think. Also, gold does react to negative um, dollar news, uh, US dollar news. So there could be a decent buy bias if there is a lot of disappointing news around, I would say, especially probably more to do with the economic recovery. So um, at the moment, sentiment isn't with gold, but uh, I would probably say if you do want to get short, then that would be the area to get short, that, that daily supply zone. If you're looking for long trades, I would definitely say the uh, the lower end of this uh this zone right here, this 1676, 1699 area. Um, so that brings us to the uh, the close of this uh, week's fundamental and technical analysis. Don't forget to like, subscribe uh, and share. It costs you nothing and uh, hopefully karma will also come your way. And uh, guys, take care. I hope you have a great trading week and speak to you all soon.